what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we are looking at making our own floating point implementation backed by uh, regular integers. Um, and so the idea here is that over the past few weeks, I've made a couple like pretty glaring floating point like precision errors where um, I used floats for something and then realized later that they were causing like actual visible problems in uh, my application. Like, so one example was I was looking at like rendering an audio waveform in our video editor and I did something kind of silly where I was like, okay, well, we're going, like these things are sampled at 48,000 Hertz, uh, but 48,000 Hertz times like a two hour long video is like way too many samples. So we we're like, okay, we'll like kind of like cut them up like this. And we'll see like, we'll look at this section, this section, this section, and look at like the minimum and maximum between uh, this section. And then we'll run that out. And what ended up happening was um, I was calculating like, okay, so how many samples should I take right now? And I would say like, okay, so if say, say we have like, I don't know, we want to click like 85 per something. I was calculating the distance by like some sample ratio where I was saying like, like sample rate over desired sample rate was some decimal number and I was multiplying that. And that ended up getting us to the point where at the end, uh, we were a little bit off. So we thought that our, our widget ended here, but it actually went ended over here. Um, another one was also related to sampling the same thing where uh, I was doing the same thing, but the inverse, trying to sample like smaller sections and it happened again. Um, and so clearly, clearly I don't have like a good intuition on like the order of magnitude of these like floating point errors, right? You, all, you, you always, you know, you like learn to program with like these rules in your mind, right? Don't do floating point equality comparison. Don't like, you know, you do some sort of like subtraction epsilon. Um, like what else? Uh, like just keep in mind that you know your things aren't gonna have like the right number, but they'll be close enough, right? But like I don't, I clearly don't have like a good intuition on what that means. And so the thought is, if we were to take, we were to make our own floating point numbers, no matter if our implementation is good, whether it's fast, whether it's even correct, just doing the process at all should give us better intuition on how real floating point numbers will work and how they'll perform going on. That's my hope, at least. Um, so the plan. The plan for today is extract the components of a normal float, like into like basically bit cast a float to an integer and see if we can like understand what we're looking at, at the, like at the base level. Then once we have that, we can try to implement some sort of like add addition, multiplication, division. I suspect that these are going to increase in complexity as we go. I think all of these should be pretty easy though in terms if we implement them in terms of integer multiplication. So this is just about learning and not using them. Yeah, exactly. I don't, we're not going to use the, like nobody, nobody in the right mind would use these, right? Because like your, your hardware will implement the floating points in the same way and the, it will just do it faster, right? So like we, we'll never win, um, but we'll maybe learn something. And then if we get through all of that, then we can like do like actual IO, right? Actually use them in some way that's like interactable with human, but we'll see how far we get. We'll see how far we get. Okay. Okay. That's the plan. So let's just get moving. Uh, so let's get some sort of um, floating point test. And let's look and start with, uh, if you go to the, if you Google like floating point numbers, you get this like IEEE 754 um, Wikipedia page. And if you scroll down a little bit, you find this like, oh, here's like the single precision floats that we're all familiar with. And you can see this diagram. It's like, this is what's in the floating point number. What do you mean by like decimal string IO? I mean, like, uh, if somebody types in 1.23, how do we convert that into our floating point representation? And how do we, like, serialize our floating point representation to, like, a number on the screen that a human can read? Like this, you know, 1.5625, what is that? How do we get there, you know? Uh, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, so here is, like, our floating point representation. There is, like, a pair a sign bit, eight bits of exponent, and some fractional bits. And this is just, like, fraction thing times two to the power of exponent thing times negative one if sign bit is if is on or off not really sure i we could read this a little bit more clearly but instead what if we just fucking sent it and tried to like parse out a normal float and see if we can like correlate these things well um okay so here's what i'm thinking the mantissa yeah exactly exactly they called it fraction in this diagram but i have heard the word mantissa before in my life so i'm thinking um, maybe we will take some float that's given to us on the command line or like a, like a number that somebody hands into us. Um, and so we'll go like std is equal to import std. And 
right here, we'll just look at like the first argument. This is only valid on POSIX systems, but I am on a POSIX system, so I don't give a shit, and I'm not going to do anything more advanced than that. Um, so we'll say like const number string is this, and then we want to turn this thing into a float. So we'll use we'll use the Zig standard library for now and let him do the parsing for us, and we can come back to this later. But I just want to start with something sane. Uh, so we can like reduce the complexity, you know. Uh, so we'll say like our number is uh, std. I think it's format parse float, and we can parse the number string. And I think you have to say that this we want to parse it as a 32-bit float, and this is probably something that can fail. And then we are going to want to like inspect this thing on some way. So uh, we can look at like const our our floating point number is going to be some structure and let's like use zigs packing to try to like extract the components that we think we care about so we have the sign bit which is a one bit according to this picture exponent is eight bits and the rest is fractional is 23 so 23 plus 8 plus 1 should be 32 yeah that's 32 so this is a uh, mantissa uh, which is a u23 I think this said 23 bits. Uh, is this supposed to be packed struct, not struct packed? What does packed mean? It just means that uh, it means that these things next to each other will be uh, packed. <laughs> okay, so uh, normally you you would write like you might have like a u8, u8, u32, right? And these would show up in your memory as like if you, like. First thing, sign, exponent, and then mantissa, 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 right? Each of these guys taking up like eight bytes per thing, or eight bits per thing. If you write, if you were not to write packed here, but you wrote like U1 here, this sign would still like, for the purposes of memory addressing and stuff, would still take up eight bits here, even though you only ever use the bottom bit of it. Um, and the reason for that is because like, your memory addressing is in units of bytes, not in bits. And so like, it just makes it more efficient to actually work with this thing. But we can say like, hey, I don't want you to be efficient. I want you to like fucking make this as small as you fucking can. And so what happens here is it'll say like, okay, so this is U1 and this is U8 and this is U23. And I'm gonna like pack these as tightly as I can at like a bit level. And when I like access these things and, and interact with them, I'm going to do the appropriate shifts and shit to make it like, come out in the way you want right so the other way you could do this is you could say that my float is a u32 or a yeah u32 and then you could say like get sign and this is going to return some like u1 um and you could just do like sign shifted left by the uh sorry like the value of the thing shifted left by 31 <laughs> right to get like the most significant bit and this is essentially what it's doing for you, is it's just like making it so you don't have to think about all these shift operations. Um, I'm not sure if this is backwards or not. I might, I might have to do it this way. Uh, I don't know if zig struct packed structs are like lowest bit first or highest bit first, which we should look up. Zig packed structs. Uh, and I think like C has like compiler extensions. If you work with like GCC, you have like this you have like an extension that does this, but like the C language itself doesn't have this. But so it's kind of cool to have like that packed keyword just like straight in there. Packed. Okay. Um, fields remain in the order declared, least to most significant. Okay, so here we had sign at bit 31, which is most significant. So it's this way. And we should be able to just say, um, hey, could we take this number and can we like bit cast it from the float to our float representation? And we should then be able to say std debug print the uh, anything because it's not a number anymore. It's like some complicated structure. And let's just print our float. Uh, zig run f zig run fp test zig and pass in like 1.23. Or maybe we'll start with something simple. 1.0. Uh, he's mad. He's always mad. A little mad guy. Um, it looks like this argv stuff is actually. Uh, C pointers, so we have to do like, ugh, const, fine, fine. std process args. Can we args alloc, so with some allocator, ugh, 
Ugh, fine. Fine. We'll do it right. We'll do it right. I don't want to do it right, but I guess we'll, we will. So, args, neck, uh, we say, like, const arg iterator. Var arg iterator. Captain Hoff, thanks for the tier one gift. I forgot that. Lucky guy. Lucky guy. You don't really get anything, but you're lucky anyways. <laughs> Uh, so, arg it next, discard the process name, and, uh, then we just, just arg it next, and we just assume that it's valid. Uh, or I guess, fine, fine, fine. Since we're here, we'll say, or else, uh, return, error, missing arg. Fine, fine. Okay, so here we get something. We get, for 1.0, we get a mantissa of 0, which is kind of odd. Exponent of 127, sine of 0. So there's a couple things that could be going wrong here. One, we could suck, and we could have done the wrong thing. Or, two, this might be, like, expected and normal behavior. So like, what else if we do, like, 1.1? Mantissa changed, exponent did not. So that's, like, a sign that we're, like, on the right track. If we make this negative, we should see the sine flip. So that's also kind of right. Um, exponent of 127 looks a lot like it's, uh, halfway between minimum and maximum, uh, because, like, probably one, like, probably things smaller than 127 are negative, and things that are higher than 127 are positive would be my guess. Um, we could probably do something like 1e10 and see what this looks like. Uh, maybe that's too big of a number. 1e5? Oh, no, sorry. We don't want to do that because this is, we're think we should be thinking in base 2, not base 10. So let's think, let's take like uh, 16384. Here we should see, okay, mantis of 0 still, exponent of bigger number than 127. So th this, this looks approximately right. We're seeing something that indicates the sign correctly and that this is like a thing. There's a missing 1 in here, which is kind of odd, but we should probably just do a little bit of reading to figure that out. And it looks like the exponent is just like biased a little bit. Um, okay, so surely this will tell us, though. So surely this will tell us somewhere. Exponent encoding. Single precision binary floating point exponent is encoded using offset binary representation, with 0 being 127. Okay, so that's good. We've already, we've already got something. So that explains the 127. So if we go back to showing 1, or let's show, maybe let's show 0 and see what that looks like. 0, 0, 0, 0. So, Okay. Maybe a zero is a special value here. We'll have to take a look. Okay, let's go back to one or two. Let's look at two. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is, if if we understand this is, if we understand what this should be, right? This should be, um, if we set the number two, this is probably written as one times two to the power of one, right? Uh, and so we're seeing in here, I guess we didn't, we didn't really talk about scientific notation at all here yet, huh? But, okay, so you know how, like, you can, like, write numbers in decimal as, like, uh, you know, 1.5 times 10 to the 1 is 15, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy that works. 1.5 times 10 to the 2 is, like, 150. We're essentially doing, like, scientific notation, but for binary numbers is, like, the mental model here, right? So you take thing at the bottom, multiply it by 2 to the power of thing. That's what you get. It looks like the power of thing is offset by 127. Sure. Uh, and it looks like there's some sort of weird shit going on with the value of 1. Um, let's see if anywhere they talk about this. Uh, oh, here. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this, look at this. So, the stored exponents are interpreted specially for 0 and maximum. So, 0 is just... This is a subnormal number. Ah, okay. So if your ex if your if your exponent is zero, then you just look at the things as like a decimal number. Um, and if your value is anywhere between one and ff, it's interpreted as one point the thing. And this is like nan and infinity. Okay. Okay, so let's see if we understand that correctly. Let's see if we can get it to use exponent 0, but not be the number 0. So, if we were to do 
1 over 2. We should get 0 0.1. So if we zig run fp test zig 0 0.5. Hmm. Oh, this is this is showing as a okay. This looks like what it's doing is we have one over two is equal to two to the power of negative one is equal to uh one point o times two to the negative one. So that's what we get when we did zero point five. It would be nice if we could get something that is harder to express that way. I guess if we did something like uh, 0 0.00000000001 or something, no, that doesn't work either because it will just express that as 1 times 2 to the negative bigger number. Okay, I don't know how to, I don't know how to manually construct one of these, uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we just won't ever see this case. Um, but this seems to make sense. So we can come maybe try going the other way. I wonder if everything that we construct manually is going to be the same as, like, is going to be valid from a floating, like, an IEEE perspective, or if they really want, like, uh, if the normalization where they want this one dot thing is going to cause problems. But, like, what if, what if we just made a float? Uh, and we, we just stubbed in, like, mantissa is one. Exponent is zero. And sine is zero. So if I understand this correctly, with an exponent of zero... We should interpret this as zero point fraction. And here we have mantis of one. So we should see this as zero point one, which is decimal, is not decimal though, it's binary. So I think that this should show us zero point five if we cast it back. But there's also a really good chance that um this is just invalid. I'm not really sure about that yet. So we could do something like uh as a float through two bit cast from F2. And then let's just like see what happens if we print this. It would be cool if this was right. Uh, zig run. Oh, interesting. Isn't this subnormal and includes the 2 to the power of negative 126? It does seem to have changed this to something like that yeah <laughs> so what did we fill in here we said mantissa one exponent zero sine zero so this gave us 0 0.0000000000001 so that's this formula which kind of makes sense yeah okay okay um okay i don't know how well i understand the format but it seems like it's pretty straightforward right it's just mantissa times 2 to the power of exponent. Sure. So what if we were going to get crazy? Like, let's ignore, you know, maybe these edge cases, we don't, like, fully understand them yet, but we'll, we can come back to them later. Because they're edge cases, right? They're not, they're not like, the common case. Um, what if we wanted to, like, add another float? So uh, F1 or A, float, B, float. And this is going to give us a new float. What is going to happen here? What is going to happen? Uh, okay, so if I'm going to put on my, like, decimal number hat, because I have ten fingers, so I can only think in tens. Um, if we were to do this with, like, decimal scientific notation, you have, like... Okay, if you have, like, a hundred, and you're trying to add... Two. <laughs> you should get 102. That makes sense to me. If we were to express this in scientific notation, we would have 1.0 times 10 to the 2 plus 2 times 10 to the 0. So, 
I think probably what we want to do is, like, if you, like, imagine that these tens are, like, a variable, does that help us in any way? Let me think about that. I don't think that helps me. But I think probably what you want to do is you want to maybe move these into the same exponent, right? If you were to... If you were to say that you have like 1.0 times 10 to the 2 and 0 .00, zero, zero, uh, 0 0.02 times 10 to the 2, then you get 1.02 times 10 to the 2, which is 102. That makes sense to me. I don't know if there's like a better way of doing it. Multiple, uh, add exponent and multiply the number. I think that's for multiplication. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, I think, I think probably what we want to do is we just want to figure out like the difference between these exponents with shift, shift them to be within like the same, the same exponent and then add them. So I think it's just like, uh, seems like we just do like, we find which one's bigger. So we'll say like, uh, var smaller is equal to a, var bigger is equal to b, uh, smaller exponent, I guess. And then we swap them if that's wrong. So if a dot exponent is greater than, or is greater than b dot exponent, uh, I guess we should say smaller and look bigger. Um, if this is wrong, then we switch them. Switch them. So stood, mem, swap, smaller x, bigger x. And now we have these things sorted. So we can take the smaller thing and shift it. Which one are we shifting? Which one are we shifting? So we have like 100. <laughs> and we have 2. But these are both kind of like, look like this right now. 1 and 2. And so we want to shift the bigger exponent to the left until it matches up with the smaller one. Or we want to shift the smaller one to the right until it matches up with the bigger one. How is like, hmm, I guess it depends on what happens what happens in here? So probably at like the most significant bit, anything with like trailing zeros is like unimportant, I guess, right? So if you have like one, one point zero 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 zero, all of these zeros just contribute like nothing to the number, right? This is just one. So probably if we have like the representation was down here somewhere. Where is the... Where was that table? Where'd it go? Wasn't there a table that told us exactly... Oh, here. This one. So, our mantissa is going to be stored as one point something. Okay. <laughs> thinking. Thinking. Brains. Turning. Um, oh, we also need to turn our exponents into into sign numbers. If we just say I8 here, does that do the right thing? I'm actually not sure. Two's complement, I'm not 100% that lines up correctly. Not 100%. Uh, two's complement. So integers are stored in this format where the, the, the most significant bit indicates negative number oh but i think like the other bits are reversed or something if i remember correctly it's been a while uh 126 127 negative 128 yeah they flip everything so that's not what we want we just want to do uh exponent bias yeah i think that's right i think that's right so we just want to do uh uh so if we just comp we have to do the 
unbiasing before we compare them, I guess. So here we want to say, like, maybe we'll do this as, like, an I-32. No, these are not I-32s. These are, like, the full things. Full floats. So maybe we'll do, like, var smaller exp. Exp? <laughs> This doesn't seem right. Smaller exponent, This the float with the smaller exponent, its exponent value is going to be like an i8. And he's going to be like x a dot exponent minus 127. I guess. Uh, but this needs to be like cast to like a i16 or something. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe an i8 would be good enough. Not positive. So I'm just going up one so I don't have to think about it. Okay, so maybe it makes sense to have some sort of, like, uh, unpacked float, so that we don't have to, like, worry too much about this. And here we can kind of store, like, sign can still be a U1, but, like, can we just store Mantissa as, like, a U32 and exponent as, like, an I16 or something? That seems reasonable to me. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the first x redundant? If a number has a smaller exponent, is it automatically just smaller? I kind of assumed no. But maybe it is. It depends on the sign, I guess. It's like smaller order of magnitude, but not necessarily smaller overall, if you consider big negative numbers small. Which I don't think I would. I think I would call consider those large, but just in the other direction. Right, like, I consider small in my head as something that's, like, close to zero. So it does kind of seem like smaller probably is, like, a fine name for that. Um, okay. So can we say, like, from... From float. And here we can take in a float. And we'll return an unpacked float. And here we will do the conversion of, like, f dot... Uh, const var exponent is an i16, he's equal to f dot exponent, int cast, away, uh, exponent minus equals 127, and then we're chilling. So we have exponent is equal to exponent, mantissa is equal to mantissa, and sine is equal to sine. I think that makes sense for now. We'll come back to it. Bar smaller is equal to, now we're just going to do unpacked float from float A. Larger is from float B. And then we do the same trick here, but this is now okay. Uh, yeah. That feels okay. So now we want to like normalize or not normalize. We want to like move the thing that's smaller into the space of the thing that's larger. Because if we assume when we look at like this thing that all of the zeros on the right side of this are like completely meaningless. So shifting to the right will lose like the smallest details. Um, but the rest, like, for if there are no small details, it will lose nothing. So I think a right shift here makes sense. So we'll take the smaller mantissa and right shift it. Oh, hold on. Is this right? Yes, because negative exponents are just one over the thing. Yeah, 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 okay. So let's do, like, larger exponent minus smaller exponent. And we will shift uh, by that much. Yeah. Yeah. So smaller mantissa shifted right by that amount. And then we'll call this smaller mantissa shifted. Uh-huh. 
Okay, okay. Then what? Then we just add them together. Uh, so we say smaller mantissa shifted plus larger mantissa. Uh huh. Except we have to handle uh, subtraction here. So maybe let's let's do this. Let's do this. Let's store the mantissa as like an I thirty two here, and we will apply the sign to it to make things simpler for us downstream. So, uh, var mantissa is equal to f mantissa, but we're gonna say, hey, I am an I thirty two now, and I will int cast to that thing, and then we will say mantissa times equals negative one if f sign. That seems reasonable. This is far from performant, and maybe it's not even correct, but I think it's okay. Um, okay, sure. So now we can just do this addition, and that will handle, it will handle the, like, negativeness automatically, I think? Maybe? I don't know, like, what happens if you shift an integer? Am I stupid for asking that? Like, if I have, like, uh, ah, uh, fuck. Uh, let's do this. We'll look at, uh, test two. <laughs> this is probably a stupid question. But if we have, like, uh, A... Var A is an I32, and it's, like, negative... If it's, like, negative four, right? And we do, like, stood debug print. Uh, A shifted left by... Shifted right by one. Does this go to negative two? I think... I hope so. But I'm actually not 100% sure on that. Uh, oopsies, quit, quit, quit. Zig run, test two zig. Okay, so that's negative two, which is good. That does track with what I thought. And so if we do it positive, it should go to positive two. So I guess that means that when you shift in, it just must keep the most significant bid. Right, because if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, two's complement, all negative numbers start with ones. So it just must mean that, like, when you right shift, it, like, keeps the value on the right. Which kind of makes sense here, right? If we, have, if we see, like, negative two here and negative one here, when you shift to the right, this has to, like, push in another one all the way into the right. That makes sense. Okay. Yep, okay, okay. So we can... That means that this, like... Shift here is valid. Valid. Um, okay, so uh, const new mantissa is equal to this. And then we have to do something where... Um, let me think about this. Let me think about this. So what if we went like up an exponent here? Right, if we ended up at like... If we were at, like, say, we'll, we'll think in decimal again because we're stupid monkeys with ten fingers. If we have, like, 9 plus 2, this goes to 11. And so in the space of, like, 9 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 2 times 10 to the power of 1, this becomes 11 times 10 to the power of 1, and then we have to shift this back. So we need to say that this is 1.1 times 10 to the power of 2. Which means that here, we have to check if we're above some number. And shift right. In that case. So here we need to do something like... New... Let's think about this. So we're going to have like 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Say, say, say we're allowed to have... 5 digits. Four, say we're allowed to have 4 digits. We end up at 5. We need to shift right until the first one in our number is within this mantissa. Oh, fuck. Wait, we forgot to apply something. We forgot to apply this, like, uh, this one point. So, the mantissa, if we're going to treat this like just the number... Uh, we want to call this, like, extracted 
uh, how do we want to call this? How do we want to call this? I don't have a good word for this, but, uh, like, base. Is that what you call this? When you call, like, scientific notation, what are the numbers called? Like, what is m times 10 to the n? But yeah, but like, what is the, what is the thing on the left called? Do they have a name for it? Coefficient. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we'll call this coefficient an exponent. And then here, when we convert the mantissa to the coefficient, we have to apply that one dot. So we say like coefficient plus equals one shifted left by the exponent? I think. But the exponent can be negative. Which means, which means what? If you have this thing stored as like, I have one dot, one, two, three, four. And so like my number is one, two, three, four. I just have to add one. But I don't know, one has to be shifted left by some amount. Right? Because like, here I have four digits. Hmm, hmm. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh, this is just, uh, this is fixed. Uh, this value here is fixed at bit position 24. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I think that makes sense. Because here, here you have 22 bits of precision. And then we just say, like we were saying before, if we understand this correctly, all of these trailing zeros are useless. But they are, like, in a relative same spot. So the first, like... We're always, this is always the most significant bit, and this is always the first value after the decimal. One dot fraction. This is always the thing in the fraction. I think. So I think that we should just be able to say uh, coefficient plus equals one shift left by 24. This is one shift left by zero. This is one shift left by 22. So it's one shift left by 23. 23. Maybe. <laughs> Who fucking knows? <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll call this new coefficient and smaller coefficient shifted. So this subtraction should always be positive because we've made sure that the larger exponent is always larger, which means that this shift should always be valid. So I'm okay with that. So now we just say smaller coefficient shifted. Hey, everyone, we mathing now? A little bit. Not very effectively, but a little bit. So here we have like our new coefficient. And now we just need to make sure that the, uh, we sub we, the first one is at bit position here, 23. So we have to shift right until... First one is at bit position 23. And so someone in chat, when we first started using Zig, just like was like really hammering at this like compiler built in called count leading zeros, which is actually very helpful in this context. Uh, Zig, I think it's here. Count trailing zeros probably with T and leading with L. So Counts the number of most significant leading set zeros in integer. Which means that this should kind of tell us where the first one is. Which will help us figure out how much we need to shift by. Maybe. <laughs> right? Right? Maybe? Maybe. Um, so we can say, like, okay, so we have this co coefficient. We want to, like, count the leading zeros on new coefficient. Leading O's. And let's think about this. We want desired leading O's is... <laughs> hold on, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll count them with our fingers because uh, I, 
I always get confused. I don't know if this happens to anybody else, but I'm always worried when I do subtraction to find something that I'm off by one. I don't know if it's just like a like a stupidity that I like learned as a child and never unlearned, but I can never remember if subtraction is like inclusive difference or exclusive difference. I just never know, so I just end up counting. And then like if the number's too big, I, I pretend it's a smaller number and count the smaller number and then extrapolate that to the bigger number. Every fucking time, man. Every fucking time. <laughs> but in this case, I'm like, well, the number's small enough that I'm literally just going to count it. Because, like, stupid brain can't keep up. <laughs> okay. So, if the number of leading zeros that we have is greater than the desired leading zeros, then we have to shift right. So, we shift the new coefficient, shifted right, we shift it right by... The difference. On top of that, you have to bother with index by one or zero. Yeah, yeah, when you talk about programming, for, for, for sure. For sure. Okay, I think that makes sense. And else, if leading... I guess we can do else. We shift left. Uh, by the other way. Is that right? So if we have... No, no, this is backwards. If we have too few leading zeros, we have to shift right. And if we have not too many, we have to shift left. Extra space after else. You are commenting the things that were very important. The most important thing is the white space, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, when we do this, we also have to adjust the exponent. Can't help it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Can we have two little leading zeros? I thought so if there's like a subtraction or something, but maybe you're right that that's not possible. Mm, no, it is, it is. Because if you have like, if you have like 1.00001 and then 1.00005, this can end up at like too many leading zeros. And the, the, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. If you're, like, subtracting these things, right? So I think that works out. Extra new lines everywhere, just new, minify it now. This guy's, this guy's on to something, for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so we also have to adjust the, co the, the exponent here. So we'll say a var new exponent is equal to the larger exponent, right? That's the one we're using, I think. And then here we'll just say uh, new exponent minus equals that difference. So we'll call this like exponent diff. I want to write exp diff, but then when I saw expo diff, it made me feel like Australian because they say, uh, they always just say things with O's at the end. And I thought that was kind of fun. So I kind of almost want to leave it in there. You know, what's the expo of this guy? You know, it just sounds so cool when they say it. Uh, okay, expo diff and minus equals expo diff. And we do the same thing here, but the other way. And this is shifted right by expo diff. Throw some mates in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the expo diff mate? Uh, and then new exponent plus equals expo diff. Um, okay, yeah. And I guess probably this new coefficient also has to be variable. And so now we have, we, we should have a new scientific notation with twos, not tens, number that we can work with. And we can just truncate it to turn the coefficient into the mantissa. And the exponent, we just have to apply that 127 offset. Uh-huh. And the sign we have to extract from the coefficient. Okay, okay. So, font new sign is equal to new coefficient is less than zero. That sounds right to me. <laughs> uh, new mantissa is the new coefficient just truncated. So this truncate 
takes in anything, and we'll just say that this is a U23. And we just truncate the new coefficient. Is that right? I think so. I think so. And then the new exponent we've already got. So here, this is already the right type. It should be. So let's try return. This is probably wrong, okay? Like, I'm not really super convinced. Uh, but it's something to start with. And uh, the mantissa is the new mantissa. Maybe? 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 Okay, so let's try something simple first. Um, maybe we will just take in... We'll take in uh, A and B. We will parse both of these. So A, B, A string, B string, and we'll just provide these on the command line, and then we'll try fucking add them. So we'll say, uh, const correct is A plus B, and then const calculated. <laughs> this feels like something I would cry if it doesn't work, and I have no idea how to debug math like this other than just doing it again. I think we just have to step through line by line when it doesn't work and just, like, think really hard about it. Just like with math on paper. Uh, okay, so we'll say const a uh, custom is equal to, is a float, is equal to a bit cast of a. And we'll say b custom is the same with b. And then we'll say const calculated is a custom dot add b custom and we'll say cat we'll say uh calculated f32 is a float 32 that we bit cast back and then we can print these things we can say we have uh correct is this number and calculated is this number and correct calculate f32 dude how crazy would it be if it was right how fucking crazy. So let's try like one and two. We should get three. Okay, so that does fucking nothing because we ran the wrong function. This is uh, fb test sig. And it's not really a function, I guess. It's kind of like a file, but the file's kind of like a function. It's called The function is main in the file. So that's, it, we technically did run the wrong function, even though I misspoke. And that was intentional. <laughs> uh, here we have to say that we want to swap the unpacked float representation. Uh, this guy, 39, mantissa, should be called coefficient, because we called it the coefficient of the unpacked version. The exponents um, are mad because they are the wrong type. So what's going on here? What is going on here? Oh, because the shift is supposed to be uh, U5. So we'll just encast this, and zig will crash in debug mode if, we get it, if it's like not a valid shift value uh, at 48. We have something else. Um, 48, 48, 48. So this is expo diff. Oh, it's another one of these like in cast problems. So Zig's being extremely helpful for us, which is fucking annoying. I wish he would be, you know, maybe he should piss off a little bit. Um, but he's saying like, hey, you're trying to shift this thing by like a, a potentially a value that like doesn't fucking work, right? If you have like a five bit number, you shouldn't be able to shift more than four bytes. And so he's saying like, Bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and so that's, yeah, that's why we have to type these incas everywhere. Uh, he doesn't like that this f sign is, he, we're treating it like it's a boolean, but it's a u1, so we'll say equals 1. Um, and 57. New mantissa is a truncated version of the new coefficient. What's a, what, what the fuck? Unexpected, unexpected unsigned inner type found i32, but I incast. Oh, do I have to truncate? Uh, okay, I see. So truncate's saying, like, given an integer of 16 bits, I want to... No, this is supposed to... I'm confused. Maybe we have to flip the sign first? Um. So where's, like, the truncate thing in here? I thought it did what I thought it did. <laughs> it's crazy thought. I thought it did what I thought. Um... I guess maybe it, it needs the same signedness. I guess here they're doing a U16 to a U8 truncation. 
And we're trying to do an I-16 to a U-8 truncation? Should you assert instead of leaving it up to casting? Um, I think that generally my advice would be not to just use these like int cast things directly like this unless you're goddamn sure. Um, but for now, um, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right? So if I were planning on using this anywhere for real, I would say you shouldn't do this int cast. You should use uh, std math cast and check for null after. Because this is going to check if it fits and return null in the cases where it doesn't fit. Um, but because I am only using this like really, really, really right now, uh, I don't give a shit. Do you really want to truncate two's complement could be naughty there? I think that I should, um, every, it should be positive at this point. So I think I don't want to truncate. I think I want to, first I want to absolute value it, then truncate it. So I think we, like, because, because, um, we've already extracted the sign value here. So we want to do like a uh, new coefficient unsigned is a u32 is a bit cast of the new coefficient um but with the top bit discarded no we just want to maybe we bit cast it and then abs it abs it then bit cast it so maybe like this You seem to know your internals very well. Well, it's only because we're doing stuff like this, right? Clearly, we don't know them that well because we can't fucking use floats without fucking up. So we've got a lot of work to do. But we'll get there eventually. Um, New exponent, expected type U8, found I16. Uh, Right, so const new exponent biased is going to be the new exponent plus 127, right? Because then we have a 127 bias. But then, like, what do we do if it's out of range? For now, I'm just going to assert that a new exponent is greater than negative... Uh, is greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero. Greater than zero? I think greater than zero. And new... And... <laughs> No ampersands in this language, only ands. And the new exponent is less than uh, U8 max. Right? I think that's right. And then we can just uh, cast the new exponent biased, maybe. Oh, should we home roll an IE 754? Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, new sign. Expect you one found bool. So new sign has to be this uh, int cast. Remember when that band was really big? Like 15 years ago? And then they put an album that nobody ever wanted to listen to on everybody's iPods. And everybody got really, really mad. That was kind of funny. Back in the day. Anyways, every time I every time I type of that, I'm ha I'm gonna think about it. You too? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I missed the stream start. Why are we doing this? Um, because I fucked up some floating point imprecision stuff, and I want a good feel for exactly what's going on under the hood. Because like I didn't really say this earlier, but somebody recently, or not that recently, like at one point in my career, somebody said to me, "Understand the data." Right? Like, that's, like, the most important thing in any programming that you're doing is, like, understand the data. And once you, if you understand the data, everything else should flow pretty naturally. And I found that to be, like, pretty true. Uh, like, since I've been, like, looking for it since I heard that. And, like, this is just an example of someone where I don't understand the data very well, right? Like, I understand that floats have some form of imprecision, but I don't really get it. And so here, we're, like, if we go through and we do the operations, we'll understand exactly what's going on. And, like, maybe we'll be able to infer better in the future. You know... Can I not do an int cast from a bool? Int from bool. Here we go. Much better. Not if we're not hearing it 1.5x. Yeah. Uh, when I listen back to these things, I listen to it back at 2x. And if I ever turn it down, I'm just like, holy shit. I can't like, 
it's just I I've only ever listened to myself at two X. So hearing myself at one X is like, oh, who's that? I don't like him. <laughs> uh, nineteen. So he doesn't like here that I called it Mantissa. So let's call it coefficient. Oh, interesting. It's a Torvald's quote. I will in fact claim the difference between a bad programmer and a good one is whether they consider their code or their data structures more important. Bad programmers worry about the code. Good pro programmers worry about the data structures. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that that's a quote for him, but uh, that's super useful. Oh, hell yeah, baby. Look at that. Look at that. It's right. I mean, we didn't have to worry about any like exponents or anything, but uh, at the very least when the exponents are the same, it does the right thing. That's a really big deal. That's actually actually super fun cool. Uh, okay. Now, we got a little excited too quickly. Because when we did 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it immediately crashed. But. Would have been cool. Would have been cool. Um, okay. Let's try something like 1.5 and 0 0.5 and see if we get 2. Okay, that's really good. 1.5 and 0 0.7. We get very interestingly different numbers, actually. That's pretty interesting. So we did something that's approximately right. Um, but clearly we're losing some precision somewhere. Which is kind of interesting. That's super interesting. Crash because exponent is zero? Probably, yeah. Probably. Um, interesting. Okay, yeah. Let's fix the crash case first. And we'll come back for this uh, 1.5 plus 0 0.7. Uh, so we can just GDB this. Uh, I guess we can't... It's not really easy to GDB with zig run, huh? You have to do zig build exe fp test zig and GDB args fp test 0 0.5, 0 0.5? Probably? Um, frame 8. Okay, no exponent. Yeah, it's 0. It's zero, which makes sense. So we just have to do some sort of like uh, special handling here. Wait, is it allowed to be zero? I feel like it's allowed to be zero, right? Uh, except that if it's zero, it does this. So how do we... Hmm. Hmm. So we just, if it's zero, we just have to decrease the exponent by one so that it's negative one okay so in what case is the new exponent zero i guess maybe the input exponents were both zero as well um let's go to frame eight My last floating point in precision problem was converting some velocity from meters per second to kilometers per hour and then back to meters per second. It lost, lost like 0.03 precision. Damn, that's actually pretty bad. Uh, okay, let's look at our input exponents. So info locals. So our smaller thing, they both had exponents of negative one. So why is our new exponent zero? Because, probably because we ended up Hold on, hold on. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Let's draw it out. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Both of these are in base 2, 1 times 2 to the negative 1. So we converted these to the space of the larger one, and then we added them up, and we would have got... Ah, so we would have got 1 times 2 to the 0. Yes, 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 yes. Because because this went up in exponents. This became 10 times 2 to the negative 1, which goes to 1 times 2 to the 0, which is 1. That's, like, correct mathematically. Um, But then why, why then? Like, how am I supposed to implement, how am I supposed to represent 1 in this scheme then? I'm supposed to represent it as zero. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so because we have to truncate. We have to pull off that first one. 
Oh, we forgot to... Oh, yeah, we did truncate it. And so here we just need to say, um, if new exponent is equal to zero, we just make it one. New exponent equals one. Because here we would have had one dot... No. That doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. I think we need to do, if new exponent is equal to zero, we need to make it so that the new exponent should be one. Don't you want to do the assert with the bias exponent? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe. Yes. Yes, I do. You're right. You're right. Uh, but I do, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you are right. Now, in our case, it just happened that it still is zero, so we still have to handle that. Um, and how do we want to do that? So we just make the exponent one, and then we shift the coefficient left by one, or right by one? The exponent is bigger, so the number should be smaller. That seems right to me. Sure. Let's see if that fixes things. Uh, okay. So we clearly fucked up, because we're getting three. And then do we fuck up, like, everything else as well? One plus one? Two? Okay. One plus two, three, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, calculated three. Okay, so we, we fucked up something there, but that's okay. Um, maybe you wanted to do it this way. Still wrong. I'm missing something obvious here. I'm missing something obvious here. We maybe we should use our brains. Maybe. So it's zero when we are in the subnormals, though. Um, is that true? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. In which case, shouldn't everything just work? If this is zero, hmm, there's something about like the biased exponent, maybe, oh, when the exponent is, we just don't unbias it in that case. I feel like I'm missing something obvious here, but I can't quite place it. I can't quite place it. Because, like, in the case of, in the case of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, we should end up with 0 mantissa to the power of 1. That's what we should end up with. So, maybe we should just break point here. Break point here, run it, and just figure out what we need to do to make that the case. So our new exponent is zero. New coefficient is that. Uh, maybe we print it in binary. I can't do that. Size letters are meaninglessly, meaningless in print command? Okay, that's weird. I thought you could do binary print, but that's annoying. Can you not GDB print binary? Slash T. Of course. Of course it's slash T. Why wouldn't it be whatever the fuck? Why wouldn't it be B for Boolean? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, fuck. 4, 8, 12, 16. Wait. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So this is at bit position 23 we have the 1. Which is the 24th bit. We truncate the 24th bit and we get all zeros afterwards. 
So when we get here, we, this should be zero. Fuck. Oh, because it's still U32. New Mantissa should be zero. Okay, wait, that makes sense. That makes sense so far. So we are seeing a thing that's like one times 10 to the zero, and we just have to fix that zero case. You don't need to change the bit, man, exponent with zero because it would be 127 one biased. Oh, that makes a lot of sense too, actually. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. You guys are right. You guys are right. So it's actually that I just want to say that the new biased exponent is greater than... The new biased exponent is zero. Yeah, yeah. Wait, okay, that's fine. So there's nothing to do here. This should just work? Maybe? But it's clearly not working. Oh no, it is working. 0 0.5.0.5 0 .5 is 1 now. Wait, that's really good. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. So it was just we were we were just asserting the wrong thing. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 should be 0 0.5. Yeah, calculated 0 0.5. 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2. Uh oh, I read typed plus there when I shouldn't. 1.0, okay. And then let's try, what was that one that wasn't working correctly? 1 and 2 or something? 1.1 1 .1 and 2 point... 1.5... Mm, I can't remember. Can we try something bigger? Like, 1 times 10 to the 10, plus 1 times 10 to the 9? That's very close. Not quite perfect. But close. Have you tried the classic one zero point one zero point two? Uh, we're close. Interestingly, so there must be something with like the way that we're handling imprecision right now. Like something about this is not tracking. Like same with this other test where we did one e nine plus one e ten. We, we're not getting, like, the same number here. We're getting a little bit too small. Which means that we are losing some precision when we convert the smaller number to the bigger number's space. When we convert the smaller number to the bigger number's space, we must be losing something. So that's here. Because we're right-shifting. Oh, interesting. So, we could actually be left shifting. Right? Because, um... If we're doing, like, integer math, we have 32 bits of precision. So, we could take the bigger number and shift it left. And do the operation, then shift it back to the right. I think for the most part, though, um, I'm okay with it being a little bit wrong for now. So we'll just put a fix in here and, be, and say uh, sometimes losing precision compared to real value. Um, but I understand why. I understand why. It's because this right shift is like we're just losing, we're just dropping precision when we don't have to. And I don't really know um, how this is implemented in hardware. Right? Like you can imagine in hardware you're going to have like I32 adders, right? Where an adder is just like, from my back in my university days, you have like, two bits go into like an XOR gate, right? I think this is how you draw an XOR, I can't remember. I think it's with a little curve back. No, this is an AND gate. How do you draw an XOR gate? Oh yeah, it is like this. What's an AND gate look like then? Oh, the AND gate's flat. Right, right. So you have like, one and zero comes out as one. Oh my god. 1 and 0 comes out as 1, 0 and 1 comes out as 1, and then the other 2 come out as 0. And so that kind of simulates, like, adding adding 2 bits together if you ignore the carry. And then you can do the carry by saying, like, uh, like 1 and 1 comes out as 1. 
And so, like, this gets, like, propagated into, a, like, the carry bit of the next thing. Something like that. Anyways, we like we have, like, some, like, physical hardware that's doing addition in fixed point numbers like this. And I assume that what they do... I assume that what they do is... They have some hardware similar to this, but for the mantises. And they do some sort of, like, operations to get these things in the right space. So, I'm not, like really too worried about this because like if we're if we're like we're on the right track here we've got something that like mostly works it's just that we've we've fucked up the per, like precision tracking a little bit and like surely they're just doing something special in hardware for that surely um so i'll just comment that as a fix me and i want to move on because i don't want to get like two rabbit holes on this i kind of want to make sure that we get on to multiplication stuff but we might come back to it um, okay. Let's see what a multiplication looks like. Uh, so I think when you do, like, multiplication for scientific notation, you have, like, what, you do, like, 10 times 100. This becomes 1,000, right? So if we were to break this out as, like, 1 times 10 to the 1, and 1 times 10 to the 2, this is 1 times 10 to the 3. This is just like adding exponents. Are there no floating point registers? I was under the impression that the floating point registers might be shared, but I don't know why I think that. Like, I know that when you're writing assembly, you can, like, access, like, like registers as 16 bit, as 32 bit, as 64 bit. And I know that when you do those integer ones that are the same, I can't remember if the floating point ones are different. I was going to type out how floating point addition works, but it's a lot of steps. Yeah, that makes sense. We will just make it up for now and not think about the real answer, I guess. Um, and then if we were, let's, let's think about like the multiplication, going back to multiplication, 10 times 200 is 2000. <laughs> which means that we have 1 times 2. So we multiply the mantissas, uh, add the exponents. Um, I think that's all we have to do for multiplication. Probably we should move this, like, unpacked to packed representation. Uh, function to float. We'll move this over here so that we can use it from multiple functions. Um, which I think is just this. Right? New sign comes from the new coefficient. New coefficient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just do this. This stuff goes here. And we just say f dot coefficient. f dot coefficient. f dot exponent. Yeah. And everything else just kind of works. Which means down here we can just say return unpacked float to float like this, I think. And then here we just say uh, coefficient is equal to new coefficient and exponent is equal to new exponent. Uh-huh, that makes sense to me. Uh, it doesn't like this for some reason, though. Const ret is equal to this. Return ret to float, maybe? Okay. And then do we want to do, like, this stuff before as well? The leading zero, the zero padding, I think, also makes sense to go in there, actually. Yeah, so we'll just do this. Uh, okay. I guess we don't, we'll just say a uh, var new coefficient is equal to f dot coefficient <clears throat> var uh, and then var new exponent equal to f dot exponent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. See, this is all making sense now. All making sense. 
This is new coefficient. This is new coefficient. <clears throat> and this is <clears throat> new exponent. There we go. Okay. We're back. I think we're back. So now we can kind of work in this like unpacked float space and not worry about like normalization and stuff and then just dump it back at the end, which means that here we can say, hey, we have, oh no, it's Rust. Nope. Not Rust. Nice try though. It's Zig actually. So here we just have A unpacked is this. We have B unpacked is this. And we just want to do uh, new exponent is equal to A unpacked exponent plus B unpacked dot exponent. Yes. New coefficient is equal to A unpacked dot coefficient times B unpacked dot coefficient. And then we're done. Right? We just slap this shit back into like the, uh, the real floating point representation. And call it a fucking day? Maybe? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Let's try some multiplications. <clears throat> so here we'll replace the plus with the times. And here we'll replace... Somewhere we call add. And we'll replace this with a mall. So here, what happens if we try to multiply like 1 and 2? Let's see what happens. Core dump. A fucking course. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, oh, interesting. Interesting. So, because of the fact that this is stored as, like, most significant bit is the thing right after the decimal. Right, so we have, like, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Pretty much all of our numbers are guaranteed to be, like, fucking massive. So it's almost like we want to shift right by some amount to kind of like get the zeros out of the way. And then if we get those like, once we do that, then we can do the multiplication. But what if we like, over are we like guaranteed to overflow? I mean, maybe we're not guaranteed to overflow if we just change these to I-64s. <laughs> right? <laughs> maybe. Uh, so bit cast, where was this? Int cast. Let's try that. Uh, okay. Integer cast truncated bits. Fuck. Nice try, nice try. GB args 1 and 2. So what's going on there? So at frame 7 we have new coefficient it's a big ass number as hex so it looks like the when we tried to multiply 1 and 2 we did get some power of 2 and but we didn't end up with it normalized correctly i guess so here we were supposed to say Hey, we want the fucking leading zeros. Oh, this eight's the wrong number now. This should be uh, plus 32, so 40. Because this is relative to an i64 now, not to an i32. Okay. The number's really wrong, but we didn't crash. That's something. Let's see if we fucked up uh, something really bad. Let's go back to doing addition and making sure make sure that like we didn't really fuck something up. So we add 1 and 2. I don't want to run GDB. We do get 3 still. 2 and 4. We get 6 hopefully. Okay, so addition still working. Our multiplication is just fucked. Which is fine. Because we didn't really expect it to work yet. So let's double check this. Our unpack We add the exponents. Multiply the coefficients. What am I missing here? Oh. Uh, hold on. So we have, like... We'll think about it in base 10 again, because we have 10 fingers, and we're stupid monkeys. 
So if I have like 100 and 100, and I multiply these together, I get one with four zeros, right? Now what's kind of odd is that we're kind of, in the case where we have like 1.1, 1 .1, like this, we're storing that as like something with a lot of trailing zeros. So when we multiply it, we're kind of like doubling up on like the number of zeros that we have on the right. Which kind of indicates that we want to... I don't know what we want to do to avoid that. Like, a right shift somewhere, clearly, right? But I don't know where. I don't know where. So we're, we're, we're taking, like, I32 and I32 and multiplying them together. Where we have 24-bit numbers, approximately. So it's almost like if we take... So if you have... These are 4-bit... Like Okay, so if we pretend that we're in a decimal again. These are 4-digit numbers. Coming out to... 1... 7 digits. And if we want it, we want this to still be four digits at the end. Right? If we have, no, is that what we want? Let me think about this. Let me think about this. Thinking, thinking. Thinking. One times ten to the power of five. Times. One times ten to the power of four. This guy has like 23 zeros after him, and this guy also has 23 zeros after him, and we want them to continually to have 23 zeros after them. So we just shift right by 23 at the end. Which is what this other guy in chat just said at the same time. So that gives me at least some form of confidence that it's not the dumbest idea in the world. If both me and another person had it, it's possible. So let's just do this. Let's just do this. Stealing a chat? No, 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 no! I'm not stealing idea from chat. I, I came to that conclusion by myself. You saw me work it through it. I'm not stealing. You can't say I'm stealing. Look, you saw me write it out. You saw me write it out. No. It was peer review. Oh hell yeah! Two times four is eight. Two times two is four. Hell yeah! Two times three is six. Boom, baby. Are we basically converting from float to fixed point, doing the calculation and converting back? I don't think so. I I think that there's a part part of we are doing like the multiplication with fixed point, uh, but we're kind of doing like the two components of it individually, right? Right. So if you have like two times ten to the two, and five times ten to the one, right? So this is fifty, and this is two hundred. When you multiply these together. You multiply the the left side and add the right side. So we're effectively doing the same thing, right? We're we're multiplying this component together with just like normal fixed point arithmetic. So we're doing like 10, right? Times 10 to the... Then we like add the exponents here. So we get 10 to the 3. And then we like normalize this to like 1 times 10 to the 4, essentially. But with 2s instead of 10s. Uh, but it looks like that's working. It looks like that's working. Which is pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Um. Okay. What time is it? We have we're an hour twenty five into stream. Down to zero times infinity. Okay. Well, we're so far from that, guys. <laughs> we're so far from that. Um. I kind of wanted to look at um. Can we try to like use new intuition to break addition? multiplication of normal floats right like we, we we now have like an idea of how we've implemented addition we know that it's a little bit less precise than the normal floating point addition but i think that there's something here that we can like infer from this representation right 
I bet if we look at um where is the fucking graph here no did we lose it bottom of 32 so if we look at this and we say we know that these things are stored this way it's almost like you can't add things that are 23 powers of two apart from each other right because there if you have like uh your bigger your bigger thing is like one times two to the power of some number right like one times two to the power of five or let's let's make it simple one times two to the power of 23 that's represented as one or 24 maybe 24 that's represented as like 24 zeros in the fractional bit position if we were to try to add one to this we literally can't do that because that would increment like off the edge here so let's try um what is one times two to the 24 one times two to the power of 24 so let's just say we like add 17 million and one and see if like that doesn't do anything. Um, so we'll switch these back to ads. Yep. And let's say 17, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one. Super interesting. So you can't add 1 to 17 million with normal floating point numbers, which makes sense, right? Because, like, you literally can't express that. But was our, like, order of magnitude right here, can we add 1 to 16 million? We can. Okay, so we're, like, maybe not, like, 100% correct because our floating point imprecision is, like, a little bit off um, on our implementation. But, like, at the very least, we, we have, like, an inkling now about when when floating point addition will fall over and it's when the things cannot be expressed within two to the 23 of each other now there's probably some cases where it can be expressed a little bit poorly that makes sense too yes so if we were to try to add i wonder if we can like force a shitty case. Uh, I guess we can say that, say we have the number 1.5 here instead of 1. We have to do, oh wait, 1.5 is a power to 1.1. 1. 1. Like, yeah, interesting. So even at 16 million, that doesn't work. At like 10 million, does that work? He adds one, but not 1.1. 1 .1. How? We, at what point do we see that 1.1 1 .1 kick in? When we... That's uh, 100,000? No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So at 1 million, we can add 1.1. 1 .1. What is the representation of 1.1? 1 .1? Am I just being like, is this a stupid number? Uh, we'll just print A and B. And we can look at like their actual fields. Uh, this doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> this doesn't mean shit. Uh, okay. Okay. What about multiplication? Is there anything that we can, like, infer about multiplication from this? I think that what I'm thinking is that multiplication almost just works better than addition, right? Like... We know that we know that like we can't add a small number to a big number because those two things can't be re represented at the same exponent. But with multiplication, it actually doesn't matter because you're doing the multiplication part in like the norm like the normalized space. 
And the exponent addition is simple. The only real problem I'm seeing with multiplication is that eventually you'll run out of exponent bits. Yeah, so I don't actually have like a case in my head where I'm like, that multiplication is obviously going to fall over. Which means that like if we're if you're writing a program that iteratively multiplies by something, that probably makes more sense than something that iteratively adds. I guess both of them will lose precision, but the multiplication precision loss will be like relative to the size of the value, which means that it's not that big of a deal. Okay, which also explains actually uh, some of the stupidity that I was running into. So, that's one of the problem. One of the bugs that I wrote the other day was I said, um, where do I want to write this? I wrote like something that was along the lines of, uh, sample size is like 16, it was like, you know, 50, right? Every, every, or window size, I guess you call it, window size. Then I did something like window size norm was a float floating point number that was like width of or window size over num samples. That's what I did. And then I iteratively added, I went from like negative window size, negative one to one. Yeah, yeah I iterated from negative one to one but just did this by adding window size over and over again, window size norm. And it's pretty clear why this is not going to be a good idea. Because if this number is very big, this, or sorry, if number of samples is very big, window size norm is gonna have to be very, very, very small. And we're going to lose precision as that number that we're adding to grows. Makes sense, makes sense. I'm just discovering, like, things that everybody's known about floating point numbers since the beginning of time. <laughs> like, obviously. Obviously. But it's not, I don't, I just, it must not have sunk in well enough, you know? One more rule of thumb is add the numbers, the smaller terms first, so they have a chance to get big enough to not get swallowed by the bigger terms. That makes sense to me as well. With multiplication, probably, based off of my current understanding, the order is less important. Maybe with multiplication, you just want to make sure that you kind of stay closer to zero, like, closer to reasonably sized numbers. Like, nothing, like, too extremely small and nothing too extremely big. But other than that, the order, like, don't think makes a big difference. But with addition, yeah, you want to you want to add the smaller things first so that they grow so that they don't get clobbered by when they get pushed into the space of the big thing. That makes sense as well. Okay. Okay. We've taken a pause. We've thought a little bit. I wonder what division looks like. Division, I have like way less of an, of a like initial understanding of what to do. But we can figure it out. Okay. Say we want to do five, uh, four divided by five. In long division with our hands from like elementary school, We'll be like, this goes into this zero times, and then this becomes 40, and then we say this goes into 48 times. And I think that we just think about it and have to guess and just hope to God that our brains have that number about right. Um, I guess, kind of, this is the same thing as just starting at 40. Okay. So, hand wavy, hand wavy, if we had, say we have like, f we express this as 4 times 10 to the 1, I guess in this case, and we have 5 times 10 to the 0, I wonder if it kind of makes sense to like right shift this five as much as you fucking can. 
and then just do it in your division, right? Say you had like four, like just something like massive, 40,000 or like whatever the fuck this is, and you divide, then you're trying to divide that by five. You can kind of like figure out probably what the exponent difference to create this is, and then you'll have like some sort of small remainder. That seems reasonable if you're dividing like big number, small number, like, or sorry, like imp imprecise number that you're dividing by. But what if you have like, what about the case where you have like, like two numbers with lots of precision? Like, one, two, three, four, divided by one, two, three, three. This you want, like, something that's, like, almost one. So th this would still work if you could do something like one, two, three, four, zero, 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 divided by one, two, three, three. That would, like, still kind of work. Even with, like, integer truncation and stuff, you'd get something that's, like, kind of okay. Would it make sense to try to invert the number and multiply? Ooh, that's interesting. Does that just work? That's a good idea. <coughs> like, all you have to do is just invert the exponent. And we've already implemented everything else related to that. Is it really that simple? It seems like it might be. Yeah, what happens if we do that? Let's try that. So div a and b, we, we unpack the two, and then we just say, b exponent, I don't know, but I'm just wondering, I mean, it seems like it should work. If our, if our multiplication works, then that should work. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, so we can do b exponent times equals negative one, and then maybe we'll say, like, function mall impl takes in unpacked floats. Uh, and just do this. <clears throat> this stuff goes here. Yeah, yeah. Then here we extract these things and call mall impl a unpacked b unpacked. And then down here, we could just do the same thing, but with the exponent multiplied by negative one. <clears throat> it seems like that could work. Which would be very cool. So we'll go back from here from plus to divide now. And let's try dividing like 1 and 2. Fuck! <laughs> uh, B unpacked. And this is BVAR. <clears throat> okay! Wait a second. That's sick. 1 over 3? Uh, that's really wrong. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, that's really fucking wrong. Ship it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be kind of funny to make a game based off of this. You need to invert the number, not just the exponent, right? I don't think so. Right? If you have... Uh, one times... If you have, like... I don't know. 0 0.1. This is 1 over 10, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 1. So if you're trying to do, uh, you know, 2 divided by 10, you have 2 times 10 to the 0 and divided by uh, 1 times 10 to the 1, right, for this 10. And then when you want to, this turns into... 2 times 10 to the 0 times 1 times 10 to the negative 1. Right? Because you just flip it. So I think you oh, you just have to flip the exponent. Don't forget the one in front of the mantissa. No. But at this point, I've already turned the mantissa into like a normal coefficient number. So I don't see why that's a problem. 4 times 10 to the 0 needs to become 2.5 times 10 to the negative 1, not 4 times 10 to the negative 0. 
That's a good point. Uh, no, wait. Yes. Zero is a special case. Is it? Feels like it is. Feels like it is. To invert four, you want 0 0.25. So if I have like four times 10 to the zero, Yeah, how do I get that? I'm gonna be crazy though. He's like, no, no, I think, no, I think that makes sense. I think it makes sense for anything. Like, I'm pretty sure that like 40 turning into four times seven. Oh, it's uh, off by one. Off by one, maybe. Hmm. One over four times ten to the two? No, no, I think it's zero just must be special cased. Four times ten to the zero is equal to four. <laughs> One over four times ten to the zero is equal to zero point two five. Where the fuck does that come from? One over forty is still zero point zero two five, but I think that that kind of like just naturally works itself out. <clears throat> uh, okay, I think that maybe we just uh. No, I don't have a good answer for flipping the zero exponent case. Don't have a good answer. What is, so okay let's let me let's think about this a little bit. One over four in decimal goes to zero point two five. Why is that? Because four goes into ten two point five times. That's where this like two five comes from. Right. So we're kind of like converting this one over four. We're trying to like get this to become x over ten, and so you do some sort of like multiplication there. If you have a times 10 to the x over b times 10 to the y, you do a over b times 10 to the power of x minus y. Yeah, I was just kind of hoping that we could avoid having to do something new. But I think that you're right. That, that does make more sense. That does make more sense. Fine. Fine. We'll do it. We'll do it right. We'll do it right. I was hoping the, the inverting the exponent sounded so promising, though. It sounded so promising. No, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, wait, I mean, maybe this is still possible. This might actually still be possible to just do it with inverted exponents. If you just, if you just get rid of the zero case. Right? You can just, you can just do that. Right? So we can just say, uh, if b unpacked dot exponent equals zero, we can just... Shift the number left by one. And then subtract one from the exponent. Uh, right, so that, that means that if we have like 10, this becomes 100. And 10 to the times 10 to the power of 1 is the same as 100 times... 10 times 10 to the power of 0, which is 10, is the same as 100 times 10 to the power of negative 1. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. This negative 1 exponent thing? I, I was confused. I was confused. I was confused. And whoever was watching me and being like, what the fuck are you talking about, you idiot? You were just right the whole time. But I shouldn't say that because this is also Fio Fian's thought, so you're not an idiot, it's just me. <laughs> no, I was confused, because I was thinking, the flipping the exponent sounded like it made a lot of sense. Because if you have 2 to the power, like, you know, x to the power of 5, right? Uh, if you want to divide by that, you do x to the power of 1 over 5. But that's because the power is applying to x. But in this case, the power is applying to the 10. Not the X. And so that's why that's why it doesn't work out. But I, in my head, I was like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. But it's not the same thing. I was tricked. 
by myself. No, don't apologize to you. You're good. You're good. You're good. It's not. I mean, I. <laughs> I also thought the same thing, so don't worry about it. Um. Okay. Division. It's gonna look a lot like multiplication. A lot like it, but the new exponent is subtracted, and the new coefficient coefficient is divided. Now, the question here becomes. We have to go back to this, like, precision problem, right? If we have, like, 1,000 divided by 1,001, this, with integer division, will just go to zero, which is, like, clearly wrong, right? But if we, like, shift this first number left a bunch, then it's fine? Because then we'll just, like, we'll get some sort of, like, fixed point thing, and we'll just have to shift it back. So can we just do something like a coefficient shifted left by uh, however much space we have, right? Let's just get as much as we fucking can. So if we have a U24 right now, but we're in the realm of I64s that we're working with locally... Um, that's 63 minus 24 is how much we can shift left by, I think. Sounds about right. Because <laughs> you can't shift left by, it might be what, might be 62. Uh, say we had like 60 bits. And we're allowed to have 64 total, but we're only allowed actually 63 because one of them is like a sign bit. So you could shift by left by three. Yeah, okay. So this sounds right. This sounds right. So a coefficient is left shift left by this. Then we do the division and just shift it back right. New coefficient. A unpacked coefficient. A unpacked coefficient. B unpacked coefficient. Yep. Then we just shift this back right by the same amount, right? Yeah. Might maybe. And then is that it? Might be. That might be it. Might be it. I think we'd probably lose some precision here, but I don't really care. Division I64 and I64 must use div trunk, div floor, or div exact. Uh, sure, we'll just use, like, fuck it. Div floor. I don't care. Does that work? Integer overflow. Fuck. Okay, let's try something simple. Four and two. Calculated. Very incorrect. <laughs> Okay, uh, so why the fuck doesn't this work? Why doesn't this work? Can we look at, maybe we just break point here. So let's do it with four and two, simple numbers, simple numbers. Break point here, run, and let's just look at what we got. So we got um, a unpacked. Uh, fuck. Can we work with const so that I uh, con let's work with const so that uh, we can just list everything at once. Const new a uh, shifted a coefficient is equal to this. And then we use the shifted version here. And then uh, new coefficient right shifts by same thing. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. GDB args here. Okay, so break here. Run. Info locals. So our A unpacked and our B unpacked are the same number, uh, but with the exponent adjusted by one, which makes sense. If we print this in hex, 
this is 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 23 bits off. Bit number 23 is the 1. So we have 1 times 2 to the power of 1 and 1 times 2 to the power of 2. Great. Great. Okay. What the fuck is this? This is a big-ass number. Makes sense to me so far. Makes sense. So we have big-ass number divided by this number. We should have another big-ass number that's also got one bit set. Makes sense. And what happens if we shift this right by 63 minus 24? That becomes 1. What's our new exponent? One, 1 times 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. So 4 over 2 is 2. So nothing about this seems wrong to me so far. Right, we have new coefficient of 1. New exponent of 1. Wait, so this just seems right to me, does it not? 1 times 2 to the power of 1 is what 4 over 2 is. It's 2. Okay. But that's not what we're printing. Why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? I guess there's a chance that, like, uh, I've got order of operations wrong here. Although, I feel like the numbers that I saw were correct. But let's just, uh, for the sake of it, double check. Okay, it's still wrong, which is consistent at the very least. Calculated. Calculated is running A custom divided by B custom. For, the, for whoever's asking about my yank command, it's I manually set the at register, which is uh, the like clipboard register in Vim, and then whatever the fuck this shit show is. <laughs> Percent, I think, is current file. Dot is current line, and then I join it with a colon in between or something. That's one of like the only actual fancy Vim bindings I have. Does that, but feels good. Yeah, feels good to be able to like copy paste lines into GDB. So it must be this is bugged. This to float. Like whatever the fuck we're doing here must not be right. Cause I'm pretty sure that like when you divide four by two, one times two to the power of one sure is the, di the answer. We could test this, um, Again, by maybe breakpoint here and do 6 and 2. So then we should get the value of 3, which is a little less uh, simple and obvious. And maybe we'll see if we get like the same thing. Run. Uh, break here. Run. So info locals. Um, P new. Well, let's do this. P new coefficient. 1. Oh, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. P new X. Okay, so we've still got one times two to the one. So something is, here is obviously not right. Uh, P shifted A coefficient over B coefficient. I'm going to print this as X. This is something different. But it just looks like if we do... So what is, what is this? 0xc 1100. Zero, zero. Okay, so that lines up too. But then when we shift it, we lose the bits, I guess. Hold on, are these in the right position before the shift? And if so, why? It does kind of feel like they are. 
Yeah, 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 because they should be on the left side of a 23-bit integer. 24-bit, sorry. 0, 4, or 4, 8, 12, 6, 16, 20. No. Z 4. <laughs> Dude, my fucking poor dumbass fucking brain. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Okay, so we want it here. We want it here. Let me think, let me think. Beep boop, beep boop. Uh, okay, so what have we done? We've done something si crazy silly here. So we have 23-bit integer that we've shifted into a 64-bit int. Shifted left. Now, when we had 23-bit divided by 23-bit, we should... This would be 1, but that's actually not what we want. Ah, okay, this is where the misconfusion... This is where the confusion came in. <coughs> so in this case, we this would give you... Like, if you have, like, 1 times 2 to the power of 23 divided by 1 times 2 to the power of 23... This should give you one. This should give you one, but like because of the way we're representing it, we actually want this to be one times two to the power of twenty-three. Okay, okay, okay. So we shift this thing left by sixty-three minus twenty-four to get it to like as much much precision as we can fucking pack into a sixty-four bit int. Then we divide it by our like twenty-three bit int, and so we have to do something like uh, sixty-three minus twenty-four. We are thirty-nine apart. Then we divided by a 23-bit integer, so minus 23, 16, and so then we just plus... Mm, let's think about that. 1 times 2 to the power of 63 divided by 1 times 2 to the power of 24 gives us 63 minus 24, which is 39. So then we need to shift it right by 39 minus 24. So 15. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. Very close. Calculated six. Maybe I was off by one? Calculated three. Okay, wait, wait, that's really good. That's really good. We got the right number, at least for this very specific problem. For this very, very, very specific problem, we got the right number. Okay, let's try uh, four and two. We should get to see two. Okay, 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 10 and 3. 3 point something. Oh! Fuck yes, baby! Let's fucking go! Wait, that's sick! That's sick. Okay, okay, so what did we do? We took our... Yeah, we, sexy, now what the fuck just happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we took um the... Larger value. Okay. We've learned a lot today, I feel like. I feel like I, I like understand this a lot better than I did before. So we have... 23-bit int. Representing... 1 point... Something... Times... 2 to the something else. When we do our division... We, what we, what we just did here, which is maybe not what's like reasonable or what like real floating point implementations will do. Uh, this is 23 digits in like base two. And we basically took these 23 digits and put them like over here in a 64 bit number. So this is like the first 23 bits. And this is like the rest. 
And the reason we did that was because when you do integer division of like 1 over 2, this gives you 0. But 10 over 2 will give you 5, which is good, right? So we're kind of just trying to say like, put as many fucking zeros over the top numbers we can so that integer division will give us like, give us like the best chance it has of being like correct. So then we divided this by something that was basically 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, dot, 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 and then 23 numbers over here. And that gives us, like, some something, right? And the, the trick that we, like, had to double, we had to get at the end was that the final number needed to be aligned, like, at this 23. So this ended up giving us something where we had, like, the final number was, like, over here somewhere with, like, stuff over here and like stuff over here but like this is what we cared about and so we just had to like shift it right so that it aligned with like this bottom side of it ended up here that's kind of all we did so that's what this like 16 is is this 16 is like uh left shift was 63 minus 24 uh like resulting magnitude was going to be like the left shift minus 24 which ended up being 16 i think what did where did the 16 come from we ended up at like precision 39 oh yeah 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 so let and then we want right shift to be the resulting magnitude minus 24 again yeah 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 that's what we ended up doing left shit we love shits <laughs> right so it was like something like this The theory is we hope that the imprecision is just right bit shifted over the scope. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. We can omit the right shift 16 at the end by 16 less at the start. Shifting left by 16 less at the start, no? But I think that we lose... I think the more that we left shift, the better precision that we end up with. I guess that precision just gets lost. Maybe. Maybe. You're, you could be right there. But part of like Part of me feels like you will lose more precision by doing that, but I can't justify why that's the case in my head right now. Uh, can we construct a case where that's not true? Um, uh, so if we have like 1,000 divided by this. Read the rest of the comment. There's insight there. <laughs> wow, you called me out. Left shift would end up at 23, which is nice con computationally analog with the multi case. Uh, not 100% sure. I did read it, but I don't feel like I have any better understanding of it because of it. <laughs> but that's probably a me problem. Um. Yeah, so I guess any extra bits of precision are just right shifted out. So it does kind of feel like you could just essentially double it. Yeah, okay. I'm sure there's something there. And I'm also sure that whatever we're doing is not the right answer. Right? Like, surely whatever they're doing is better. Um, But it gives us, like, an intuition on a option. I was looking earlier at, uh, like, how they actually do this point division um and i saw like a reference to this thing called uh let's see if we can find it let's see if we can find it newton something newton floating or maybe it's just newton integer division i was looking at integer division which i think that is like kind of the same same thing, right? We've kind of found that, like, floating point and integer division, like, integer and floating point operations are tightly intertwined. It's just, like, exp uh, the exponent stuff has to be handled as well. Uh, but they do this thing where they, like, they do... Where is... Where did I see this? Something about Newton iteration. Oh, here. Yeah, Newton's method. So they do something where they do, like, what is essentially, like, gradient descent. <laughs> where, like... Uh, they basically try to, like, use the derivative of some function 
which is like the division and like the value at some point and then you like guess a number and then just like kind of like try to find the way to like make it make your function bottom out i didn't really understand it so whatever we're doing is not that <laughs> which is fine uh, it worked well enough well enough okay okay i'm pretty uh pretty happy with that i understand that this is like not not how real floating points are implemented but i think that probably like the only real useful strongly useful part of this was like the addition stuff i feel like that really like sunk in the uh, like why where the floating point precision goes like the fact that you just can't add one to 20 million with it has like literally zero effect is like something that i just wouldn't have really i don't think i really grasped before even though i kind of knew conceptually it was possible the multiplication stuff and division stuff was just kind of fun but fun fun nonetheless but i think we'll call it there um we'll be back tomorrow with um i want to experiment with the idea of using wasm modules as like a plugin system for an application with the idea of like since wasm modules are kind of sandboxed already you could kind of expose like a scripting language to your program as like just a wasm module that you load up so i kind of want to play with that idea so i'm going to be looking tomorrow at like making a wasm module from scratch and just kind of like see what that looks like and how do you like load it in a normal application and stuff um but yeah we'll be back tomorrow uh if you like what you saw we stream most days at around two o'clock pacific time uh right now we're in between projects we'll be looking at that wasm stuff tomorrow but if you want to look at stuff that we've looked at in the past um there is all this stuff available on youtube there's a youtube link in the twitch description and there's code for most of these projects on github as well i probably won't upload this code to github because it's kind of like scratch code kind of meaningless but it is what it is um if you're watching on youtube there should be a twitch link in the youtube description of both the channel and the video where you can swing by and say hi if you're online between the hours of two and four o'clock pacific time um like subscribe twitch prime all of that stuff and uh we'll be back tomorrow all right bye youtube and twitch let's find someone to raid